Um, so first off, we're going to start with Gerard. Good morning, Gerard. Good, good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so your first question, Gerard, is what is the First People Center? Hi there. Um, yeah, the First People Center is a service office for uh, our First Nations, Inuit, Métis students. Uh, each year we get over 500 students coming to Canada College from all over the, the country, the province. And um, we're here to help ease that transition for those students. Uh, that's our main goal. But our also, also our other goal is to be visible in the college and to provide services uh, to any student who is looking for some of those services, whether it be a resource for an exam, an essay, or a paper, for sure. Awesome. So the second question is, can non-Indigenous students go to the First People Center or FPC? Uh, for sure. Yep. Um, everybody's welcome to the First People Center. It's a welcoming space. Uh, we have students from uh, all nationalities coming in to visit. Uh, we welcome that for sure. Um, we're right in the center of the college, right in the student service uh, area, that center block. Um, if anybody wants to come by, uh, take part in any of our events, our activities, um, all faculty, staff, students are, are welcome to come to our site. That's awesome. And your final question, what sort of events does the First People Center host? Um, well, mostly, like I said, from the onset, our office is there to provide supports to a lot of students who come in. We do have students who are first time coming into the um, urban setting for the first time. And that could be a little bit scary and strange to them. Um, so that support is there for them. We help them transition from their small communities, their remote communities, uh, come in and we try to make them feel welcome. Um, Canada is very good at that. Um, we have a great relationship with all the faculty, staff, and the students here at Canada College. Um, our retention strategy or our strategy to make students uh, feel welcome is uh, by putting on a lot of activities and events to get them feel like they uh, belong here and are welcome here. Uh, we have a cultural advisor that puts on uh, workshops around crafts and uh, uh, cultural uh, appropriate uh, events. Uh, one year, uh, in one year, we'll have uh, two powwows. We have our welcome powwow in September, which is going to be the second Friday uh, of school. So every student, the faculty and staff of Canada and Nipsing is uh, welcome to that. And we also get students from uh, the local high schools who want to come in and uh, absorb some of that culture. Um, we also have another powwow in February, which is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's one of the first powwows that kicks off the year for the powwow trail. Um, we've been doing it for almost 35 years. So uh, Canada College was uh, one of the first colleges to have a student powwow uh, held at its campus. And that was uh, almost 35 years ago, actually put on by a friend of mine. So um, he's, uh, he's uh, been credited uh, for doing that. Um, other activities involved uh, land-based learning activities, um, culture camps, uh, we do partner with uh, different association organizations in the college. We'll take some students out to, for example, Canada's Wonderland for Halloween Haunt, a small little trip uh, where students can pay $30, go to Canada's Wonderland for six, eight hours, and come back the very same day and enjoy the fun and the food and all the thrills that uh, Canada's Wonderland has to offer. Um, Imaginative is one uh, really big uh, showcase event where we take some of our students who get to go down to uh, GTA and um, taking the experience and the culture around um, uh, a world indigenous media arts and film festival for a couple of days. So our students get to rub shoulders with uh, actors, uh, famous people, directors, money people, anybody in that the media film industry and arts industry. So it's a good experience. Students get to see what it takes to become somebody uh, that can be successful in the media and arts film industry. Um, yeah, a whole host of other things that we have a Thanksgiving Traveler's Feast for our students. Uh, some students cannot go home because of the travel, the time commitment, and the money. So we'll hold a Thanksgiving feast for them or Thanksgiving bundles available for them where students can come and pick those up. Um, yeah, a lot going on. Our Canada Aboriginal Student Association is very active. So I encourage anybody online to uh, look us up on Facebook, uh, Instagram. That's the Canada Aboriginal Students Association and uh, follow us, like us, and, and, and check it out. Um, we also have a, a podcast, which is new. Uh, we're in our third, our, our third recording. Um, just come out August 1st. 
where we get to talk to students about their experiences coming to Canada or college. And at, it's uh, mainly geared toward Indigenous students, but you know what? It's for everybody. It, it, it touches home on a lot of the things that students um, feel when they're coming to uh, post-secondary for the first time, the anxieties, the challenges. Um, but in the end, the ultimate, and the ultimate goal is that they graduate from Canada or college and they have memorable experiences. And then that's really in a nutshell what the First People Center is here for, um, to give that student, uh, the students uh, a good experience. Um, they leave with good memories. And of course, the most important thing, that, that diploma. So I welcome everybody to stop by the First People Center at uh, College Drive and Commerceport Campus. Stop in, uh, check us out, uh, get on our mail list, and uh, we'll keep you guys uh, all updated on what's going on at the First People Center. So thank you for your time, everybody. That's uh, kind of what we do in a nutshell. Next up, we're going to be speaking with Trish from Student Success Services. So your first question, Trish, what is Student Success Services and when should I be going to Student Success Services? Hi, Daryl. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, so what is Student Success Services? Um, it is a great place for students to go if you're really not sure where to start. We do offer a range of services. Um, we do accessible learning services, which provides academic accommodations for students with permanent or temporary disabilities. And this can include disabilities such as hearing or vision impairments, um, attention deficit disorder, learning disabilities, uh, mental health disabilities. Uh, but it can also include temporary disabilities. So if you have a broken limb, or if you get a concussion, you need some temporary accommodations for your classes. Um, we also provide uh, student success profiles, which are academic accommodations for students with disabilities. We do psychoeducational testing referrals. Uh, we can provide assistive technology and training for that. Um, and we also do for um, first year students with disabilities who are coming in the summer transition program. Um, it's a three day program that is specifically designed to support um, incoming students with that transition into post secondary learning. Uh, we also provide mental health services. So if you need to talk about anything, we are here to listen. So we have. We have a variety of mental health resources and supports, um, including assessments, consultations. We have short-term counseling, we do community referrals, and we also um, do mental health workshops and awareness events. Uh, we have both mental health navigators and a mental health nurse, which is who is available to help students um, develop skills to manage anxiety and depression, improve their personal skills, and also um, uh, increase your confidence. Uh, and then the one other um, kind of area we, we have is our, our learning and transitional supports. So um, all students can access peer tutoring. Uh, we do have one-to-one -one and group tutoring available for course specific content. Uh, it is $20 for 10 hours of tutoring. Um, we also offer free drop-in and online peer support sessions. Uh, and these are for general note-taking and study skills and also for basic computer and software skills. Um, and then lastly, we do have um, an international um, transition retention and support coordinator, um, and they will be joining us in September. And they provide programming specifically designed to support international students um, transitioning to living and studying in Canada. Awesome, thanks Trish. Uh, the next question, is there a deadline to register with Student Success Services? So to register for our accessibility learning and our mental health services, there is uh, no deadline. It's a kind of continuing um, intake process. So we do have an online registration form that students can access. Um, we do recommend that if you do have a documented disability that you um, register with our office as soon as possible and provide the documentation so we can get accommodations um, in place in a timely manner. So uh, if you're coming for us in September, you may be had an IEP in high school and you're looking to continue your accommodations at the college level, um, you do need to go and um, book an appointment with our office and get everything set up. That's awesome. So if I'm going to Student Success Services for Mental Health Support or Counseling, will this show up on my transcript? 
Um, no, and this is a question we get a lot. Um, our mental health services and accessible learning services, we are a confidential office. So we don't disclose who's registered with our office, what accommodations um, you're getting. It is um, completely confidential. So even if um, maybe your parent will call up and ask if my son or daughter is registered with um, accessibility services, we cannot let them know um, unless we have written consent from the student to disclose that information. So um, we are 100% uh, confidential, nothing shows up on your transcript. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so if I'm having trouble in my classes, but I don't have a disability, what supports are available to me? So you can still come in and you can meet with one of our um, navigators or triage navigator uh, and they can see if there's some kind of academic um, supports that we can put in place, just kind of give you some study tips, um, some learning strategies that way. Uh, you can also access the peer tutoring that we have or um, any of the um, drop-in um, support sessions. So the last couple of years we've offered them online, but now as we're returning to more in-person, um, we are looking at offering it both drop-in drop, drop -in online and in-person. And those dates and everything will be communicated on our uh, Student Success website. Awesome. And finally, is Student Success Services available at all campuses? So yes, uh, we support all the four campuses. So at College Drive, at Aviation, and at the Commerce Court campus, we do have um, a resource center uh, where students can um, meet with uh, one of our navigators or they can, um, if they do have academic accommodations and they need to write with accommodations, we do have, um, they can write uh, their tests with our resource center. We do support Perry Sound campus as well. Uh, most of the appointments with the navigators would be virtual, but we do um, offer in-person accommodated testing as well. Awesome. Thanks, Trish. So uh, we're going to move from Trish now to Tr Trina, rather, St. Jacques. So Trina works in the Center for Career Development. Good morning, Trina. Uh, the first question I have for you is, can I work on campus as a student and how many hours can I work? Good morning, Daryl. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, yes, I'm from the Center for Career Development. And the long and short of the first question is, can I work on campus? Yes, absolutely, you can. Uh, this year, we are happy to be able to offer more than 100 part-time positions in a wide variety of departments. Um, the nice thing about the campus positions are uh, you don't necessarily have to um, look for a position or accept a position that's in your field, but it does give you an excellent opportunity to get that first experience uh, that's directly related to your program. Um, we offer uh, the job postings on our job portal, and you can find those on the Canada website. If you look under the support tab, you'll find it's clearly labeled employment for students. Uh, click on that link. It'll take you right to our Center for Career Development webpage. And on the page, you will find the link to access the job portal. And this is where we list the campus jobs as well as jobs within our community. Uh, the part-time positions called Canada Work Study uh, offer 10 hours of employment. Uh, ideally, we don't want to overwhelm your schedule with work hours because really the priority for coming to school should be the school part, uh, so should be the education. Therefore, we limit you to 10 hours a week while working on campus. Um, as Trish mentioned, uh, tutoring is also part of that uh, campus employment opportunity, so keep that in mind as well if you're excelling in a, pro, in a course uh, or in a class in particular, or you're coming in with some previous experience. Um, tutoring is a great opportunity as well. Uh, I'm going to mention too, I've just talked about work study so far, but you should know we also offer full-time employment uh, during the summer months. So that would be uh, in between your first and your second year or your second and third year. So basically you need to be a returning Canada student in between academic years 
to be able to apply for uh, the I Can Work program in the summer. And by all summer, I mean it's 15 weeks of employment and that's 35 hours a week, which is nice. You only work Monday to Friday, no weekends. Uh, and most of the schedule is uh, eight to four. However, the positions are very geared to the department that you're working in. And I'm gonna put sport and wellness on the spot um, because they have a variety of um, events that take place outside of that eight to four hours, you really do have to communicate with your supervisor and find out uh, that you may have to do some evenings and some weekends based on what the position is. So the long and short of it, yes, we offer campus jobs part-time during the school year and full-time during the summer months. Awesome. Thank you very much. The next question is, when can I apply for jobs on campus? The uh, positions are going to be posted uh, on the Canada website under the support tab, Employment for Students, and you'll see a box that says Canada Work Study. And the applications are going to be open from midnight, well, 1201 actually, uh, on September uh, the 6th, so the very first day of school. Those jobs are going to be posted on the portal, and they're going to remain open for application for three weeks. So that will take us right to 4.30 p.m. on Friday, September the 23rd. Now, having said that, sometimes we have the opportunity to extend the postings in the event that we don't have enough applicants. And believe it or not, sometimes that happens. Um, so you've got a three-week window to apply. Um, there is an eligibility process that needs to happen that affects that application time as well. But all of those details are on the, um, on the website as well. Awesome. Uh, are international students able to work on campus with this program as well? Yes, we do have a, uh, a smaller budget. Uh, just That's just the way the world works right now. We have uh, a few budget constraints there, uh, but we do have the ability to offer uh, employment, campus employment for international students. Uh, they still have to go through the eligibility process uh, in order to be approved to be able to work on campus. Now I'm going to mention uh, sometimes where we get a little bit of a discrepancy is students international students are allowed, according to their paperwork, to work 20 hours a week on campus. However, our programs only offer 10 hours a week. So um, most often those individuals uh, tend to find a second campus, or sorry, not campus, a second community job as well. Awesome. And if I don't receive OSAP, can I still qualify to work to, uh, can I still qualify for a work study position? <laughs> Yes, and that is why we use the eligibility form. It has a budget component on it, and it does have a description in the application uh, that you may need to provide us a little additional information if you have not applied for OSAP or if you were denied OSAP. So uh, I hope that everyone uh, will have a look at the application, the eligibility form, and apply to the positions that are out there. That's awesome. Thanks, Trina. I'm going to move now to our campus bookstore questions, and so I'm wondering if um, if Aaron is able to answer these questions for us. Uh, the first question is, how do I know what books I'll need for my classes? Perfect. Thank you, Daryl, and good morning, everyone. So. I'm Erin from Access and Inclusion, but I'm going to help out today with the bookstore part. So in regards to how do you know what books are needed for your class? So once you register for your classes, you'll be able to sign on to the campus bookstore website and you can input your the program, like your course code, and it will give you the books that you need. So I'm going to put that in the link. Actually, I'll put that in the chat right now before I forget so that everybody will have access to the bookstore webpage here. Awesome. Thanks, Erin. Um, when is the bookstore open? So the bookstore is typically open between eight and four for the first two weeks. The, the campus store is actually located at 100 College Drive as well. So just be mindful of that. And if you don't know how to get here, you know, please feel free to reach out and we can, uh, we can help you if you're at one of our other campuses. Perfect. Uh, will the bookstore deliver to residents or other campuses for free? So there isn't a free shipping to residents, but there is in-store pickup available for Perry Sound as well as College Drive. That's perfect. 
uh, if I look up my course code and there aren't any textbooks showing, does that mean I don't need a textbook at all? It doesn't necessarily mean that you don't need the textbook. Um, I would connect with your teachers just to verify and the website will also indicate if they're still if they're if they're waiting for the information that there is or isn't going to be a book required as well. Awesome. Uh, when you're done with the book, could you sell the book back to the bookstore? Yes, there's there is a buyback program available to students. The amount offered is based on the demand for the book as well as the condition of the book. And a student card and debit card are required to complete any transactions. That's awesome. And when you're buying your books, are there used books uh, along with new options available? There are new used and digital options available. Um, there are often there's often an option to rent or buy as well. And if your course requires um, if the course, if the, oh my goodness, requires courseware or online resources, uh, please select new as there's no guarantee that the course, that the codes will still be in a used book. So, you know, some of these books will require some sort of code and buying used isn't necessarily the, the greatest option for that sometimes because then you're, you're going to have the book, but you won't have the code, which isn't going to be beneficial, right? So just be mindful of that. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. We are going to move now to the sport and wellness office. So that is Kathleen. So Kathleen, are there any fitness facilities on campuses? Yes, at our three campuses in North Bay, there is a fitness center at each of them. Uh, they all have elevator access as well. Uh, varying equipment, but if you are a Commerce Court student, for example, you are able to use the fitness center at College Drive and at Aviation. So as long as you're a full-time Canada student, you do have access to all three uh, fitness centers. That's awesome. Um, is there a gym membership for West Prairie Sound students? There is. So for the past couple of years, we have partnered with Evolve Health and Fitness in Perry Sound. Um, so if you are interested in a student membership uh, at that facility, uh, there's a eligibility form uh, that will be posted on the Sport and Wellness website, as well as um, linked in our Instagram account, uh, in our bio, where um, you just have to register, wait for your confirmation email, and then uh, all you have to do is pay a $30 deposit uh, for your membership to Evolve Health. You just go, Brenda's fantastic. She'll help you out, get you all set up. Um, and that deposit is for your key fob. It's a 24-hour facility. Um, and it's very, very simple. And it's an, it's an awesome place to, to work out. That's awesome. Um, what varsity sports are there on campus? And if there are, where when are the tryouts taking place? So this year we have uh, varsity men's and women's volleyball and men's basketball. We also uh, will be bringing back club men's and women's hockey. Um, we are looking into uh, bringing back men's and women's soccer as well. Um, there, all the coaches information uh, is on our website um, and each team, they do have their own Instagram page as well. But for the tryouts that have been posted, the dates, for women's volleyball, there will be tryouts on September 6th and 7th. And for men's volleyball, the tryouts will be uh, September 12th and 13th. Awesome. Um, is sport and wellness just for varsity athletes? Absolutely not. Sport and wellness is for everybody. We offer such a variety of activities, uh, both sport and non-sport. Um, I like to think that we offer a little something for everybody. Um, everything from hikes on the campus trails. We have a fantastic esports program um, that is accessible to anyone. Um, we have uh, actually a gaming center here on campus, um, but students are able to uh, participate if they're remote. Um, we have a huge library of virtual fitness and wellness programs uh, through the YouTube channel. And uh, as the year goes on, we are just ex so excited to be offering more and more programs um, that will have interest uh, from all of our students. That's awesome. If I don't like playing sports though, do I have any other options? Absolutely. Like I said, uh, e our esports program is fantastic. Um, this year we are introducing a new um, 
bike share program, a bike lending program where you can borrow a bicycle for today and ride it around town. Um, in the winter, we offer a snowshoe lending program as well that you can use the snowshoes either on our campus trails, trails, excuse me, and uh, or you can take them uh, on the lake in the winter or any other trails that are in North Bay. Um, we have uh, a rec to go program where you can borrow um, a variety of different equipment and games. We have uh, cornhole, can jam, spike ball, and a few other uh, pieces of equipment that students can borrow. Um, again, we have our virtual uh, fitness programs. There's some great meditation videos on there, some great uh, accessible yoga videos on there that I really love. Um, and as the year goes on, we will be introducing more and more programs, um, non-sport programs. So the best way to stay updated on everything that's going on from sport and wellness is to follow our Instagram account at Canador underscore Panthers, uh, because things change uh, quite often and we like to introduce uh, as many new programs as we can. So like I said, the best way to stay updated is to follow our Instagram page. That's awesome. And the last question, uh, what specifically is there to do in the winter, um, not just on campus, maybe in North Bay as a whole? So North Bay is a great place to be in the winter. Um, we, like I said before, we have our snowshoe lending program where you can borrow snowshoes either for the day, for the weekend, or for a week if you like. Um, we also on campus have uh, cross-country ski trails if you're interested in that. There's also... Um, two ski options in North Bay. There's a Laurentian ski hill uh, if you're a downhill skier, um, as well as the Nordic Ski Club where they do offer uh, cross-country skiing and snowshoeing as well. If you would like to learn, that would be a great place to go. Um, ice fishing is also very popular in North Bay. Um, we will be doing We'll be hosting, hopefully this year, again, our outdoor skate event um, at Average Joe's on Trout Lake in North Bay, um, where you can come out. Uh, we have skates if you need skates um, and just have some fun with your friends, your classmates, uh, have a nice warm beverage and uh, a meal as well. So lots to look forward to in the winter. That's awesome. Thank you, Kathleen. So we're now going to open it up to our Q&A. Um, so we have a number of questions that are there. I do just want to make sure that people are aware from a uh, register, a register, a webinar attendee um, side of it that we aren't able to answer all the questions that you have if it's an admissions related question. Unfortunately, there's nobody that we have that is from admissions on this particular call. We've done previous sessions with admissions staff, so you'll just have to review those, uh, those resources on the orientation website. Um, one question that we do have, and um, we've had it a few times, is finding accommodation in North Bay. Um, so I'm not sure if anybody really wants to answer the question that's on the panel or if I will just do so. Um, but uh, in terms of North Bay accommodations, we do have residents. Uh, they do have a wait list that you can certainly sign up for. Uh, and then Facebook Marketplace, we do have a couple of different offline websites, or and I should say online websites, uh, Kijiji is one of them. Um, Facebook Marketplace, I understand that there is a shortage, and we are trying to find more, uh, find more spots for you to live. Unfortunately, though, at this time, uh, we are still just like you trying to find more. So uh, unfortunately, there's not a huge amount that we can answer for that, but I will leave it um, there. So I am just going to dismiss some of the questions that are in here. There's also a question about parking passes. So uh, in terms of parking passes, you do have a, um, uh, a parking pass can basically work for both residents and your on-campus parking. Um, so you'll just need to part purchase the one. I believe there's an a, um, a option to say you're also living in residence so that it'll work for both spots. Um, so you'll have your option um, in that case to either, um, if you're not living in residence for a single parking pass, it doesn't include it, uh, as well as a bunch of different lots. Basically, the lots get more expensive as you get closer to the campus itself. Um, maybe, Trish, you could answer this question. Uh, so we've got a question uh, that is focused more around the accommodation finding, um, but it also mentions mental health issues. So uh, what are the resources available for mental health 
um, issues with students that um, they can access through Canador. Thanks, Daryl. So you, uh, we do have the mental health services part of student success services. We have uh, our mental health navigator, and we also have mental health our mental health nurse available. So they can meet one-on-one, -on -one, kind of discuss what the needs of the student are, and then refer them out um, to either other resources in the, the Canada community or in the community as a whole, or just continue doing like, um, on, like continuing meeting up with the student and just kind of doing the, the check-ins with the students, see how they're doing. That's awesome. As a follow up, um, there is an anonymous question regarding student success. What's the email for sending documentation showing that there is a disability? So I'm going to assume that person has not actually been in touch at all with student success. So what is the email, but also what is the process uh, for that to be addressed? So um, our email is student success now at canadorcollege.ca, and I can put that in the link. But um, the best way to submit the documentation for us, uh, or the most secure way, because a lot of medical documentation is confidential documentation. So email is always not the best, most uh, secure way to send uh, medical information to our uh, our office. But if you do complete the the public reg registration form, and I'll put that link in the chat. Um, but at the part of the registration process is there's an opportunity to upload your documentation and that uploads it to our secure case management system um, where that's a little bit more secure. So, and you'll be able to, uh, um, once you get registered with our office, you will be part of um, Accommodate, which uh, is our, our the system we use to monitor the accommodations and there's also a portal in there where if you have any additional up, uh, documentation or anything changes um, you can put the updated documentation in there that's awesome thank you trish um kathleen we've got a question for you so you may have already mentioned the dates uh, will there be tryouts for the men's basketball team there will be those dates have not been posted yet um i will post uh coach hong's email in the chat here um so if you are interested it's best to just reach out to him directly um but again uh follow us on instagram if uh, there are any updates we will be posting them on our instagram page that is awesome um aaron i know you aren't um actually a panelist right now but we do have the question in the, the uh Q&A portion. Can you make your prescriptions available at the school so you don't have to come home for them regularly? I figured that's worth answering uh, if you wanted to jump on. Sorry, not Aaron Floyd. I meant to say Aaron Mitchell. I always forget there's two Aaron's on the call. <laughs> Absolutely, you can. So we have a campus health center. So it's on uh, campus at the Education Center campus. Um, we have a family doctor. We work Monday to Friday and we're just like a regular family doctor's office, kind of a home away from home. So if you have prescriptions that need to be refilled, uh, you can absolutely contact us. I'll uh, make sure I put our contact information in the in the chat box. Um, so you can give us a call to book an appointment or if you have questions about it, if it's a certain type of medication. The other option now um, since the pandemic is a lot of family doctors are able to refill your prescriptions even remotely, um, you know, with telephone calls, things like that, if you prefer to maintain that relationship with your family doctor, but absolutely reach out to the Campus Health Center for any of your healthcare needs, and we're happy to answer any questions. That's awesome. Thank you, Erin. Uh, we do have another question from uh, Marianne. So once I know what my classes are and their codes, could I go to the campus to find exactly where my classes are located? And Marianne, yes, you certainly can. Uh, I will just say the first week of school, we will have um, student volunteers along with some staff to kind of direct you if you haven't gone through, but you're always able to walk on campus. It is a public building. And so if you're looking to just kind of walk around to figure out the campus a little bit, that's a good idea. Um, you can certainly do so. Um, in terms of other questions that we have, so we do have a question about hostel facilities available at the college campus. So Boana, I think what you're getting at is residence, really. We don't have a hostel per se. We do have residence and that is available. However, like I mentioned, they are currently full, but you can certainly um, you can certainly be able to um, get on their wait list in case anybody was to um, depart and make their room available. And in terms of registration, uh, we do have a question about, is there an update on when, when registration will open? Um, so yes, there is. In fact, I believe it opens this morning, but um, Trish, you may have a better answer to this. 
Um, yes, uh, it does open this morning uh, in 20 minutes, actually. At 10 o'clock, uh, registration is going to begin for um, some of the programs. So not all the programs open at once. At 10 o'clock this morning, I believe it's the School of Trades is the one that's going um, first. And then I believe aviation is happening at 12 and then international nursing, practical nursing, and Bachelor of Science of Nursing is, is happening at 2 p.m. today. There was an email that was sent out to um, all students. It should have gone out, I believe, yesterday, and it will list all the programs and when the registration opens for those programs. Um, we also, um, starting at 10 o'clock today as well, there will be a Zoom drop-in support um, available. So if you are having any issues with your registration, um, you can join that Zoom link and um, you'll be able to meet one-on-one -on -one with one of our admissions staff. Um, so I just saw the other question uh, about the deadline for a course registration. So for most courses, and this is in the email that got sent out by uh, admissions, it's September 19th, so 10 days after the start of the program, um, except for certain programs, and I know aviation is one of them, um, the last day for registration is September 6th. Awesome. Thank you, Trish. Uh, can I get the website where the recorded video of this session will be uploaded? So if somebody wouldn't mind putting that into the um, to the chat, that would be great so that Akash can access it and everybody else can access it later. Um, so we do just have an anonymous question about when registration is going to open for a certain program. So I apologize, we, um, you'll have to refer to your email uh, that would have been received from the admissions office. So uh, we don't have an admissions rep uh, slash registrar's office um, representative. So unfortunately we aren't gonna answer that question, but just make sure to refer to your email. It'll all be uh, listed there. And um, Sakdeep, you asked how to search for links after this meeting. And so the website where um, the post, uh, the video will be posted and the transcript will all be linked at the um, session, um, uh, at the link that was provided in the chat. Um, thank you, Trish, for answering that um, question that just came in. Uh, is there any other questions at all from attendees? We currently have zero uh, open right now. So if you do have any, please post. Uh, 